Welcome. We invite you to the worship service and to worship with us this morning here at First Calvary Baptist Church, 1401 Pine Street, Columbia, South Carolina, where the Word of God is preached, taught, edified, and testimonies are given by the Reverend Dr. Samuel K. Lewis. There is something about the name of Jesus. It takes away all of our fears. It gives us hope for today and tomorrow. The name of Jesus strengthens us. The name of Jesus make, makes us want to tell someone, anyone, and everyone who will listen about the goodness of our Lord Jesus Christ. As Christians, we are commissioned and admonished by Jesus to spread the word of God, his love for the world, his grace, and his mercy. Let us pray. Dear God, as Christians, give us the boldness to tell others of you. Give us the willingness to want to fulfill the commission given to us as believers. Glory, glory, glory to your name. So we come this morning asking that you give us boldness and the willingness, strengthen our faith as we, as we evangelize to the lost and the unsaved, turning the world towards God's love through evangelizing, evangelism, and Christian education. Equip us for the work of the ministry of edifying the body of Christ. Romans 8, 31 through 33 asks the question, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Help us, dear Lord, to be committed to your word. Bless, Lord God, this day. Bless, O oh Lord, the world today. Bless this congregation and those who are in need of a touch from you. Bless the shepherd of this flock, Reverend Samuel K. Lewis. This we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Bless, O oh Lord, your holy and your righteous name. Amen. Amen. We will have a selection from the choir then the announcements, and then scripture reading.
Good afternoon, First Calvary family and friends. Once again, we are happy to have you join us today for our services on Facebook Live. We're located here at 1401 Pine Street, and I'm told that very shortly, we will probably be worshiping here together again as a group. So let's keep praying for that, and we look forward to seeing you then. Meanwhile, we do have some announcements for you, and we would like to let you know that there are some people who are a little under the weather right now, so let's keep them in prayer. They are Margaret Hepburn, John Squire Sr., Vista Fields, Deacon Jasper Salmon, Michael Scott, Deacon Jeff Coat, Juliet Bino, James Roof, who is hospitalized right now, Brenda Poe, who is also hospitalized right now, and um, Tara Goddard. She is at home, but we would like for you to pray for these people. Also, Henrietta Farrell will be having a surgery tomorrow in Aiken, South Carolina, and her family is asking for us to pray for her. So let's keep all of these persons in prayer. The 156th anniversary of First Calvary Baptist Church will be celebrated in July 2021. We are asking all members to support the anniversary financially as well as spiritually. There are five categories, giving categories, and they are platinum, which is heritage, $1,000 and above. We need seven persons to donate to that. Gold, which is historical, $500 to $999. Ten persons are needed. Silver, commemorative, $300 to $499, with 10 persons needed for that. Bronze, legacy, it's $156 to $299, and we would like for 125 persons to donate to that. We also have the category of new generation. We have not forgotten our children, and so we're asking our children to donate at least $10 or more. We are asking members to remember the 156th church anniversary with a very special offering during the next two months. Well, the Magicals are also celebrating 25, 45 years, excuse me, of praising God in song. Due to COVID-19 limitations, they will not be able to present the annual spring concert this year. Therefore, they will not be seeking sponsorships as in the past years. However, we have converted two vintage albums to CDs. One CD is from the Magical's first concert in 1977, and the other CD is from a concert presented in 1981. They are offering the CDs to anyone donating $20 or more toward the anniversary celebration. Checks should be made payable to First Calvary Baptist Church and place the Magicals, M-A-D-R-I-G-A-L-S, on the memo line. Donations may also be made through Giveify. Once again, the support of the entire First Calvary family is so much appreciated. You are also cordially invited to the memorial service of the late Bonita Louise Hicksman Jackson. And this will be held August 20, uh, 2020 this year at 2 p.m. here at the church at 1401 Pine Street. If you're interested in attending the memorial services, we are asked that you please RSVP to Mr. Donnie Jackson, and he would like this by July 1st. The telephone number that he may be reached is 803 five five six one four six nine that's eight oh three five five six one four six nine as we speak of giving don't forget that although we're in the pandemic and we're not physically here in the church we still appreciate all donations and you can do that by go picking up your device downloading to giveify locate first calvary baptist church locate that hit donate Make your offering, and we certainly do appreciate it. We have also a challenge for everyone for First Calvary and anyone else who's listening. 
Proverbs challenge. Now each family has been challenged to read the assigned proverb for each day of this year. Then you're to write down your favorite proverb of the week on the cards. These were presented to you and provided to you uh, in your fe February care package. So have you chosen your proverb for today? Today, the proverb says, unfriendly people care only about themselves. They lash out at common sense. So let's keep that in mind. Unfriendly people only care about themselves. They lash out at common sense. So we know we don't have many of those kind of people around here at First Calvary Baptist Church. So we want you all to have a wonderful, wonderful week. Enjoy our inspirational message that's going to be coming to us from our pastor, Reverend Dr. Samuel K. Lewis. Remember, we're still in a pandemic, so even though you may have been vaccinated, if I were you, I think I would still wear my mask. Better safe than sorry. Have a wonderful afternoon, a blessed week, and we'll see you again next week at the same time.
Let us all say amen. amen. Let us say thank you, Jesus. Thankful just to be one in the number one more time. And we thank God for bringing us through another week's journey. Hmm. Some ups and some downs. Some joy. Thank God for some times of joy. But also some sorrows. So much, so much. So much is going on in this world around us. Fires and floods. And in the middle of the night, could you imagine your residence crumbling in around you? So much, so much, so much is going on in our world today. And we have no recourse but to pray for peace and to ask God to please massage our hearts and make us better. Please massage our hearts and make us better. How many of you know we can do better? We can do better if we would. We, we can do better if we would. Receive the text from Sister Doris Ruth that Brother Jimmy is in Lexington and solicit the prayers of the church. Received word that Sister Brenda Pogue is in the hospital and we lift her up in our prayers that we're able to resolve one of the issues and we pray that the same thing will happen with the second part. Deacon Jeff Cole is not doing well or feeling well and Sister Tara Goddard had a heart procedure and everything went wonderfully well with that. The doctor said everything was clear, so we are thankful for that praise report. Amen. We have not come up with a final date this month to re enter the church. We still have a few things going on with getting it sprayed and several other issues. So the only thing I can say is, and you put a question mark by this, maybe third Sunday we will do either an indoor or outdoor service. And if we, since that is our church anniversary, if we did an outdoor service, we would do an early morning service so we can be out there and be through before the main heat of the day comes. So... Probably 9 or 
God's word for us today from the 17th chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke. Beginning with verse number 20. We shall read verse 20 through 22, verse 25, and verse 32 and 33. And as always, your homework is what? In your leisure reading to spend time with the entire story. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Look here, or look there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. Verse 25, But first, must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. 32 and 33, Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word and sanctify it deep within our hearts. One reason from the thought this morning, don't look for the kingdom, but be the kingdom. (laughs) Don't Look for the kingdom. Demanding when shall the kingdom of God come. But be the kingdom. For Jesus said the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. But the kingdom of God is within you. Don't look for the kingdom. Be the kingdom. Sometimes we always look for and long for the grandiose. We love the wow factor. And there were many in the New Testament who held to these grandiose ideals when it came to God and his work. When in fact it is not God's desire to be seen as above us. Though he is indeed that and much, much more. But his desire is to be with us and in us. John 1, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. But on this particular day, a Pharisee came to Jesus. <laughs> and if you were a Pharisee, you were you were you you were you were somebody. 
demanding, says this translation of him. He was a Pharisee. When shall the kingdom of God come? Pharisees loved being in the know. And knowing gave them ultimate authority and power. They were Pharisees. And knowing stuff. <laughs> My Lord. Especially religious and spiritual and divine stuff elevated them to a new plateau. And gave them boasting rights. Well, be careful in our Christian journey of wanting boasting rights. Whatever blessings come our way, let us take it humbly. Not one Christian brother or sister trying to lord over another just because I know something. If I happen to know quantum physics, don't let me stick my chest out too far. <laughs> because whatever we have, God gave it to us. And the Bible tells us that he has blessed all of us with some talent. And that we're all a part of the body of Christ. The foot can't say to the hand, I don't need thee. The eye can't say to the ears of the mouth, I don't need thee. Because whatever our talent is, we are all a part of the body of Christ. <laughs> but here the Pharisee wanted to know and demanded the time of the coming of the kingdom don't just look for the kingdom seek in your day to day living to be the kingdom. Indeed, sometimes we want to know as much as God knows. You remember in Genesis the story of the Tower of Babel. They wanted to build themselves a tower that could reach to the heavens. And the serpent said to them, if you eat it, <laughs> you shall be as gods. But it is clear here in Luke 17 that Jesus explained that the exact day or time of the coming of his coming is not for us to know. Some things are not for your knowing, Mr. Pharisee. No man or woman nor of the day when the Son of Man shall come. I tell you, the time, the time, the time of God's kingdom, the time of the coming of God's kingdom is his business. 
and God's business alone. But what we need to do is not look for the kingdom, but be the kingdom. What we need to do is to nurture and care for our souls. in the ordinary, everyday doings of life. So it's not, says Jesus, in the extraordinary, nor in the grandiose, are the supernatural. But here Jesus tells us that what is important to him is how you and I live among one another and treat one another. If I have the gift of prophecy, and have not love, it profiteth me nothing. So what makes us kingdom builders? And we all should want to be kingdom builders. Builders is when we simply seek <laughs> in your nightly prayers, in your morning prayers, in your noonday prayers, when we simply seek a closer walk with God. that grandiose thing that some are searching for out there, <laughs> looking for out there. Jesus says the key portion of it is already within us. And all we need to do is only to access it and to own it. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. God is now in O W getting and gathering people into his family. It is a revolution of the heart to be more and more like Jesus. The other day we saw the summit between Putin and Biden. Two major atomic or nuclear powers, nations. We saw them sit together. We saw them look each other eye to eye. We heard their words. But we can only pray that their words were indeed an honest effort to make our world a better world. We can only pray. <laughs> 
that their words were an honest effort. I hope they were not playing any political games. The world is too dangerous now. We need to learn. That unless we learn to treat each other better, we will all perish. What powerful words! The kingdom of God is already in process. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Don't just look for the kingdom, but Lord, help us to be the kingdom. The kingdom is already in process in the hearts and minds and souls of every believer. And as Jesus confronts us, follow me, we should respond, yes, Lord, to your will. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll serve like you want me to serve. You remember the prophet Elijah? said he looked for God in an experience for God in the grandiose in one of his experiences and what he found out is that God was not in the fire or in the thunder or in the storm he was looking for God there, but the revelation that came to him is that God came in a still, small voice. <laughs> we thought if he would find him anywhere, it would have been in the fire and the storm. But God was not there, but God came to him. In a still, small voice. We may get thrown off by always wanting the supernatural and the grandiose that we fail to do and see the many ordinary everyday things God is calling us to do and be right now. Someone said it's like being so heavenly minded that we are of no earthly good. And what he's saying to us here is that the Christian faith and the Christian life is not mainly about signs and wonders, but simply inviting Jesus into our hearts and living the Christian life every day. It means that the coming of God's kingdom is seen in how we treat one another right now. So don't spend your time preoccupied looking for signs 
But just simply live the life that you speak about. Are you treating your brother right? That's the crux. If we don't do that, if we have the gift of prophecy and have not love, if we don't do that, it don't mean a thing to God. Are you treating your sister right? And if we would start there, we could make the heart of God glad and happy and satisfied. Everything is not for you to see and know, Mr. Pharisee. Then he tells us you're going to have all kinds of religious preachers, religious spokespersons. All flowery and flattery and full of the world's ways will come saying all manner of things as if they are the smartest, most brilliant people ever. Nobody, as if they're saying, nobody knows like I know. <laughs> as if they have some kind of window into the mind of God. Or some kind of spiritual, magical, spiritual wand over God. But listen to this. Jesus says, I don't care how flowery it sounds, how good it may sound, don't you listen to them and don't go follow them. So the key is to live the God-fearing life and be ready when he returns. I tell you, it's a sad thing to turn on the evening news now. Shootings and killings. And Fox News loves it when they can talk about how we are killing one another. Oh, that just, that just grimaces their heart. But with so much ugliness going on in our world, sometime we wonder, is the time of his return drawing nigh? But Jesus said, I'll tell you this, the time is not yet. The Son of Man must suffer and be rejected. Many rejected him then, and many are rejecting him now. But my caution, my plea to every one of us is don't reject him. And let us always remember what Jesus went through for us. Ah, thank you. Wounded? For our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. He 
his return will not take place in some grandiose Hollywood like cinema but right in the midst of everyday ordinary life so be careful what you do and how you treat others for on that day when we least expect it is when he just might show up The world will be in a mode of business as usual and Satan will have uh, hypnotized us that we are secure when in fact he knows that we are yet out of the ark of safety. So it behooves us to get to know him now, to walk with him now, to follow him now, to love him now, to learn of him now and to give glory to his name now. When he comes back and the door is shut, <laughs> won't be no time to try to go out and find some extra oil for interest into the wedding feast. So be ye also ready, whatever day, whatever time, God decides to usher in the kingdom. Do we get ready for God? Do we prepare our souls to meet God? Are we as diligent in taking care of our spiritual lives as we are in taking care of the other aspects of our lives? Food, we're going to get that. Haircuts, we're going to make sure the hair is looking well when I had hair. <laughs> Clothes, all of these other things, all of these other aspects of life. But do we take as much energy concerning our soul? The choice will be between the world and eternity. And I'll take eternity with God any day. Remember Lot's wife? Jesus pinpoints her example to us. For she looked back and was turned into a pillar of salt. And the devil always wants us looking back trying to make us believe that we've left something back there in our old life, in our life when we were outside of the ark of safety. He always wants us to look back and indeed to go back. But don't you do it! Whoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whoever shall lose his life shall have life eternal. Our best choice is our clothes is to stick with Jesus and hold to his unchanging hand for one of these mornings, in the bleak of an eye, every child of God shall find themselves resting in the bosom of Abraham. For he shall separate the sheep from the goat, one taken and the other left. One snatched out of the fire and the other left. And so... Those of us who are serving the Lord and honoring the Lord and walking with the Lord now shall, like Elijah, walk with him on into eternity. A new body and a new nature. 
For those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, the carnal, the fleshly will perish, but the spiritual will live on eternally with our Lord. Paul said, a spiritual body to be one day in the everlasting kingdom and to see him. Thank you, Jesus. To see him face to face and hear the angels singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Don't look for the kingdom, be the kingdom. By living right, by loving one another, by doing unto others as we would have them do unto us. Don't look for the kingdom. Be the kingdom. Have the mind of Christ in you. And daily, daily, <laughs> daily, daily, thank you Jesus, walk with him. Just a closer walk with thee. I've been out there to the left and to the right, but now, Lord, just... The devil thought he had me, but now, Lord, just... The enemy thought he had defeated me, but just a closer walk with thee. Not down, but not out. Thank God there's power... There's power, there's power, there's, there's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's not about the grandiose. But if we would just be who and what he asked us to be. We open the doors of the church. We extend the invitation of discipleship. The Lord is good. He makes a way for us out of no way. He tells us over and over and over again, even when we've done wrong, that we belong to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. said unto them, but the kingdom of God is within you. Time is filled with swift transition. No doubt about it. Lord on earth unmoved can stand. We all stumble and fall. But Bill Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Everybody. Oh, to his hand. To God's unchanging hand. Yeah. Oh, to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Oh, 
up with me and reminds me that I am his own. Thank you, Jesus. God's unchanging hand, oh, to his hand, God's unchanging hand, be your hopes of things eternal, oh, to God's hand. If there's one who wishes to invite Jesus in, you can do it right now. For whoever confesses with their mouth and believes in their heart shall be saved. If you would just invite him in as the Lord of your life, ask him for forgiveness. Make a determination day by day by day by day to walk with him and indeed hold to his unchanging hand. And now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now henceforth and forevermore.